Hi everybody, this is gonna be a long one, so don't forget you can scrub down along the bottom there, different chapters, to see exactly what we're gonna cover, and that is today about buying homes in the villages. We're gonna look at some that are all the way below 200,000 to ones that are over $2 million. Living on a horse farm with over five acres. We're gonna talk about taxes, how much it costs to maintain a pool, and put a pool in. Also about utility bills and all that kind of stuff. Keeping up a house, let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, that's right. We're going to talk money today, and this is kind of fun for me. Oh, by the way, I'm Rusty Nelson, and thanks a lot for joining me and subscribing. I really appreciate that. And th yeah, this is going to be a little long. You may even see me change shirts or something, or go, it may take me more than a day to get this together. But uh, I, I started looking at, so I've been here for over two years, and I started looking at exactly what it was costing me to live here. And it started getting very involved. And I thought, well, you know, a lot of people did these budget things, you know, on YouTube and stuff like that, what it costs. And the Villages has got some stuff, and I'll show you where that is. But, I, you know, I thought, I, I'm just going to go ahead and do it because I guess the big reason is, is I live here already, and I was surprised that when I revisited some of these budgeted things, how I could tweak them a little bit. And I had completely forgot that I was paying this and paying that. Why? Because, you know, a lot of times we get onto this auto pay thing and things just get paid out, so we forget about it. But if you don't live here, this may make you rethink about things. Now, the weird thing is, is a lot of these things are not specific to the villages. I, I mean, you know, a lot of us all have a house mortgage. We have car payments and we pay trash wherever we are. But at least if you're thinking about moving here, this will also give you a chance to see, well, yeah, well, our gas bill is like $5,000 a month, and down there it's only $4,000 a month. But we'll take a look at all those things, and a lot of these I will show you exactly what I pay or what I paid. And also I will reference you back to, say, like certain things about um, becoming a Floridian, some things you have to think about. And I should have listened to some of my own words in the beginning because it actually cost me a little bit with taxes. But what I'm going to do is I'll just keep plodding along on this in sections. And first thing I'll start out with is actually buying a house down here. And that is anywhere from under 200000 Yes, believe it or not, 200000 I just looked this stuff up today to well over $2 million up on some horse farms and stuff like that. And yes, they do have them. And I'll show you a couple of pictures of those. <sighs> Boy, I'll tell you what, this is, this is, this is definitely uh, a, a lot of work putting this together. So anyway, as I say, let's go ahead and, and, and get to the first part of this buying a house down here. First thing we're going to do is take a look at some of the homes that are below 200,000. I know a lot of people said, oh, there's no homes here at 200,000 below. Yes, there is. In fact, they are, usually you'll find out they are in the, I'll, you know, they're, they're at the very beginning when the villages first started, this is where they started building things. And they're actually more like akin to mobile homes versus the newer homes right now. I think you'll see a big difference, but we'll take a look at three of them. And the first couple few are below 200,000. Now let's jump over to the village's um, website here. And I, I like showing this. You can go villages.com and you'll come up on here because I get a lot of questions. People go, oh, well, are there homes? All you have to do is go villages.com. This is a great site. It's got maps. You can see the whole area of the villages, as you see here on the right. And all I did is put a filter on here for 200000 So let's take a look at the cheapest one we have on here, which is right here at $184,000, $85,000. Now it's 1,100, 1,200 square feet, two bedroom, two bath, and take a peek here at some of the pictures inside and here's one the outside and the inside of the home and you can see it it would need some upgrading but it backs up to open land so to speak which 
you know, these days you pay extra money for. But you, 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 this is what the homes look like in the very beginning. And if you wanted to have a home that was under 200000 and that was in your budget, you very well could move in here. But we're going to talk about all the extra expenses that go on to that throughout this video and things you may want to consider if you're thinking about it. And the other thing, too, is to realize that this is up in the northern area. And it's not right next to everything, but it's, you know, it's a short golf cart ride away or, or hop in your car and you're kind of in a, in a newer area. Let's let's run over to and we're going to completely go to the other end. And a lot of people don't know about this area, but check this out. It's kind of interesting. Sticking with the Villages website, like I said, again, uh, I'm showing you this so you can learn how to use this and kind of fumble your way through it, but you will learn a lot by staying on the site. Just in case you don't know it, there are two listing systems. There's the VLS, which is the Villages listing system. They are the only ones that will be listing the new homes here in the Villages. And I know you folks that live here already, you understand a lot of this. And then there's the MLS. So if you're buying a used home, you kind of need to check both because they're like oil and water. They don't mix together and they're not listed on e with each other. So just, just be advised to that. But we're on thevillages.com. And as you can see, this house we're going to take a look at. A lot of people don't know this actually exists. There's an equestrian area that there are actually homes for sale. Now, they don't come up a whole lot. And I believe there's some lots up there, but don't quote me. Understand, I am not a real estate agent. I don't represent the villages or the MLS or anything else in any way. I'm just, like I always say, a knucklehead on YouTube right here. But let's take a look at one of these places that's listed. This is 2.1 million. Personally, I think this is a deal. And, you know, if I had a different lifestyle, I may be living up, up at this place. Anyway, we take a look at this. This is a um, little over five acres. It's in this area. It kind of has a little view. There's a nice pond up there. Um, this may be a little flooded because it looks like there's, if you look right over here, it looks like there's actually the fence goes down into the water. So really interesting. But as you can see, really nice home, full barn, places to put your horses, probably rent some stables out. Yeah. This is living in the villages right here. And a lot of people don't, like I said, don't even know this existed, especially for the people that live down south. Now, right after this, we're going to take a uh, look at a home that is listed on the MLS. And this is a much bigger home and more centralized in the villages. Now, this is a little bit, a little bit too much house for me. But I think you'll find out that, you know, that th this is 2.6 million. I think the other week I saw a house uh, for about four point something, which was absolutely gorgeous. It looked like um, uh, a resort almost with the backyard. But this one's this one's pretty darn close to it for up here in the villages. Anyway, here it is. This is listed. You can actually look this up on Realtor.com, but it's two point six million and realize that you know this is right now so we're talking about november towards thanksgiving of 2023 in case you're looking at this a different time but uh gorgeous house a uh, little 5500 square feet on three quarters of an acre it sits right up on the northern side of Lake Sumter. Way in the back there, you can see the Waterfront Hotel back there. And this is a look at the back of the house. And you can see a big extension was built onto it up on the upper right-hand corner. And that's the uh, upper porch. I believe that's off the extension looking out there. So probably a nice spot to look out from your bedroom. But the pool's a really nice, uh, gorgeous area. And uh, man, what a great place to go out and have a little breakfast out there. You bought yourself a big old house and now you have a mortgage on that house. So that's something else you definitely have to consider with your, um, your, your purchase. I mean, you're going to have that and then you have to consider in your write-off. Now, uh, your write-off for your interest uh, as far as your taxes go. So I, 
I can't tell you what that is. Some of the things I can tell you is in Florida right now, the rates seem to be, and I'll throw these up here, a uh, at 30-year fix if you have a you know, decent credit rating in Florida with 20% down around, around 8 and 15 years is around 7. And you can do a 10-6 uh, arm, you know, somewhere around 8 or so. And... There you can see some of the um, rates right there as far as the 15 and, and the 30 go uh, over the last month. And, and this is November in uh, 2023. Now, the thing is, is if you take a look at this, an easy way to kind of think of this as far as your expenditures, and this is kind of the way I, I did it when I was doing it, I just look how much it's going to cost me per thousand for one hundred thousand dollars. So taking a look at this, your monthly payment on a fifteen year fix. Now remember, thirty year will obviously be less outlay, but for a hundred thousand on a fifteen year fixed is basically nine hundred and some dollars. So nine hundred and some dollars per thousand. So if you had a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage you would have a little less than 3000 on your uh, mortgage payment. That's about it. The only other thing to really think about that is, obviously, if you pay cash, you don't have that. If you don't put more than uh, 20% down, I think, or something like that, it's you're probably going to have to pay a little bit for mortgage insurance, and that's not for you. That is for the loan company to protect their investment, but... Uh, you get to pay for it. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Anyway, that I can't help you with, but um, what I can help you with is talk to you a little bit about taxes. So let's talk about property taxes next. Next up is taxes. We're going to take a look at a couple things here and look at the difference between counties and a few things. Now, here's the thing is I have already done a extensive video on it involves taxes, bonds, how to look stuff up. Um, and you really should watch that if you want to understand taxes and bonds and what CDDs are and why we have them and how they function within this area. So I highly suggest you go watch that because you may not understand some of this as I go through it. Anyway, I'll put the link down below for you and you can check that out. But first of all, let's flash this up here and we'll take a look at, this is on the website. This is for Sumter. So this is what a tax bill looks like. And there's a couple of things that I want to talk about on here that you kind of need to know besides just the overall thing that, oh, this is how much taxes are going to cost you. Obviously, part of it depends on the value of your home. And if you look at this tax bill, it says ad valorem and non-ad valorem. So one is based on the value of your home. The other is not based on the value of your home. So in other words, your bond is not, and your uh, fire assessment is not. And if you go back and look at that video that I was talking about, that will explain it all. But one thing it, to note on here that's a got you, and we'll talk about rates here in a second and probably how much it's going to cost you, is that in Sumter County and a lot of other counties, you get discounts for paying early. So if you pay in November, you get a 4% discount which, you know, can add up to a little money. December is three, January two, and February one. And then after that, it's, uh, you know, you're just paying your taxes. Unless you're paying late, then you'll, you're will you going to owe money for having to link with taxes. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I will show you one of my tax bills. But first... Towards the end of the summer, you get what's called a trim notice. And a trim notice tells you what your taxes were the year before, what they're proposing, and what the budget changes that they're asking for. And if they don't get any budgets, exactly how much your taxes are going to be. And it's divided up into basically, the, although there's eight columns here, the, the concept of it is broken up into, into three columns. 
So last year, my property taxes, which were valued on the assessment of my house, were $5,062. If they did absolutely nothing and didn't change the budget for the county, the taxes would be $4,700. But they're proposing that they add in on the budget so that it'll be up at $5,004. Now, believe it or not, that's actually just a few bucks less than what my tax was last year. Now, there's a couple of things to note on here. I'm going to tell you a story about me, and here goes. There is something called a homestead, where you homestead your home, you tell Florida, and you go, I'm going to live here permanently, and I'm going to be a permanent resident of California, or California. Oh, my God, I'm jumping back a few times. Of Florida. And by doing that, you receive certain benefits on your taxes. One of those is exemptions. And if you look down at the very bottom here, it says first homestead exemption and additional homestead exemption. And the reason they're divided into two is because they're rated differently depending on whether they apply towards your tax base or not. But what it does is it's not a direct credit on your taxes, so to speak, like a discount. It, they reduce the value of your home by $25,000 and $25,000 um, additionally. The other thing that happens is that when you homestead, the value of your home is frozen. The, the assessed value of your home is frozen and won't be raised by more than 3% each year. Well, I decided to delay my time coming down here because I misunderstood the time frame of when that had to be filed. And when you file that home said for the freeze to take place, the 3% increase freeze on the assessment value of your house, you actually had to do it the year before. So you can't like do it in the middle of the year and say, oh, I want it to start now. I decided I'm here. It doesn't work that way. It has to be the following year. But if you look at these numbers, you can see the market value of my house in 2022, and, and it's never the real value of the house, but it was assessed at $377,000. Well, by me delaying a year, they raised the assessed value for 2023 up to almost $420,000. So you basically have a 11% increase or $40,000 that now is taxable. So if you think about it, that ate up almost my whole $50,000 exemption. What I'm saying is, is pay attention to your dates. Look at this trim notice, because this last year they did have problems with how they figured out the percentage of taxes. So if something doesn't look right to you, say something, you know, see something, say something, and I did that. I called them up and asked them because I thought my 3% kicked in, and it really didn't. But I will say they were extremely nice in the tax office and took some time to explain it to me. And although I just wanted to go jump off a bridge someplace, so to speak, because of my stupidness, um, they were very nice, and I realized that next year. But that's actually going to cost me every year now because they raised... 11% instead of that 3%. So with that said, let's take a look at um, my actual taxes. This is actually my taxes. I had to redact part of it. It sounded like the, the government, you know, and then you can't see this, but... Uh, for obvious reasons, I didn't want to put address and account numbers in this. They valued my house, as you can see, at $420,000. And my taxes, my ad valorem taxes, which is based on the value of my house, were just as they said. So obviously, they got the budget approved, were $5,004. Then the non-ad valorem assessment, which is the fire assessment, the maintenance fee, the bond maintenance fee, and the bond. We're going to talk about that in a second, but like I say, I go through that in detail in that video. That all came to a total of $2,356. So my total 
payment for my property taxes on my house, including my maintenance fee for the bond and the bond. And like I said, if you don't understand that, you need to go back and watch the video. I say that enough because it's very important because you will not know if they've got the wrong numbers in there if you don't get an idea of what this is. And the fire assessment fee. Now, if you look down at the bottom, if it's postmarked, you get that discount. And if it's not postmarked, all the way up to the March 31st, so you save about $300 by paying it early. So that can help out. And there's the payment bill down below, so you can check that out. And that's about it for, now we're going to talk about some other taxes and stuff and the bonds and stuff like that. But that's about it for the taxes. And uh, on that other video, I show you how you can look them up for properties. You can see how much of it's paid off and everything else. Why? Because simply it's all public knowledge and it is very easy to look up by name or address number in the um, Sumter County website. I want to break down the last bill that we looked at with the property tax, especially the non ad valorem, which means basically that it is not based on the value of the property or house. And those two things are the bond and the maintenance fee. And we're going to talk exactly what they're about briefly. But once again, I'm going to tell you to watch the other video because this is not going to be complete by any means. I'm just going to explain just a little bit about it so I can fend off some of the comments that I got from people that don't live here. I wouldn't pay the bond. Well, trust me, if you live in almost any place in the United States and you bought a home, you paying the bond. Yes, you are. You are paying the bond. It's just that it's separated out from the price of the home in the villages. That's it. So the bond pays for, and let's let's take a look at it. I'll throw it up here really quick. This is in the non ad valorem part of the taxes. The bond is basically pays for the infrastructure surrounding your home. It also pays for everything we basically see out there. The maintenance fee pays for that infrastructure after you move in there to maintain it. So let's say it's like a street light or some part of sewer or something like that, something that the bond paid for, the infrastructure put in there. Basically, that maintenance fee is the upkeep every uh, year, basically, that you pay. So that's what it is. And if you take a look here, this is the actual, the non ad valorem for my, what we looked at last time, my maintenance fee and my bond. Now, the bond is based on a unit, and you'll understand that if you watch the video. So it has nothing to do with the size of your house and inadvertently has to do with the size of your lot because it's how many lots are in a unit. They divide that up, and then that's how much your bond is. So this is exactly what mine is. The Sumter Fire um, assessment for the fire is basically for everybody is, is in essence, the, the same. There's always, a, there's always a question I get all the time. Should I pay off the bond or not? So here's, here's something to consider about the bond. I have to say, I am not a real estate agent. I am not giving you advice. I'm just telling you what I've heard. You need to do your own personal investigation into this. First of all, it's, first off, it's one of the first questions I asked, should I pay off the bond? And many of the real estate agents here told me, no, don't pay off the bond because... One, because the average for people that move here, uh, they move three times while they're here. So you may not be here much more than a year and you go, oh, I want to move over here and do something else. It seems to be like a hobby down here for folks in the villages. But anyway, um, the basic concept is, is that let's say you and, and, and so bonds here, let me say this. My bond was about $27,000 on the house. I know people that moved here long before that, they were less because it simply cost less to put the infrastructure in. 
I am doing a video with Ray and Ashley about building their house kind of over in a special area, and their bond is $72,000. And I, from what I've heard down below, south of here, the bonds are around forty dollars and $50,000. So, you know, keep that in mind. And also, these bonds are financed, so they come attached with a interest rate. My interest rate, I think, is around 4% or so. And obviously, interest rates are up now, so the bond is going to be more. The, the interest rate on the bond is going to be more. Now, that's included in, in what you pay every month, but there is an interest rate, and it's you know amortized over 30 years. Another question is, is, well, can they add on another bond or do that? I believe, and like I said, I am not a real estate agent. I, know, but I believe they can redo that. And I have heard that when interest rates went low and there were a higher rate, they refinanced the bonds, which obviously would help to reduce the amount for you. You have to make your own decision on whether you want to pay off that bond or not. And a lot of people come in and buy a house, cash out, and they pay off the bond. And the next question is, well, if I pay off the bond, do I have to pay a maintenance fee? Well, yes, you do, simply for the fact that you still have to maintain the infrastructure. And yes, if you lived out in Timbuktu or Podunk, Alaska, wherever it is, you still have to, your county still has to maintain the infrastructure that's around there so you don't get stuff for nothing. So there you go, the bond and the maintenance fee. Let's get on to, ah, let's try some utilities, see what happens with that. Before we actually get into the utilities, I wanna show you this page because this is kind of interesting. You can get this at uh, villages.com and show you how to use this kind of really simple thing. But it's cost of living uh, in the villages hyphenated, and I'll put the link down below. But this is off of their website. And what I'll do is compare what my actual uh, costs are compared to what they say. But it, it'll give you a general idea. But the second page kind of looks like this, and it just shows you, um, you know, different estimated costs for the different size of the homes. But Let's take a look at exactly what my costs are, and then we'll compare the two. I guess if we're going to do that comparison thing between what they say and what I'm actually getting, might as well do it right now. So let's take a look at that regarding what we just talked about, about the bond, the maintenance, and fire, and see what how the, how the two compare. Now, you have to remember that they're actually on this site, they're talking about new homes. So mine will be different for that simple reason. Plus, well, let's just take, take a look. Okay, so here we go. These are the current homes, and what I did is crop it down so that it's the average uh, development district assessment, which it says bond maintenance and fire. So I'm in a courtyard villa, and it says the value of the home is 349,000. Now you have to remember this doesn't, deal with the value of the property, but more about the lot size and so on, because it's not ad valorem. It says $230. Now, my magic number is for that is 196. So you need to check if you're buying a pre-owned home or you're buying a new one down in the newer areas, it will change. Obviously things have gone up since I purchased my house couple years ago. So they say 230 and I am at 196. Let's get to utilities finally. <laughs> Let's talk about basic utilities and that's gas, electric, and there's actually two types of water here in the villages and sewer. So one thing you have to understand is gas is not available to all places in the villages. So places up north, only have electric as you move down south. They started to get electric uh, and gas. And the thing is, is that they're offered by different companies. In other words, I have two different companies, one for my electric, one for my gas. So um, you may go across the street and it's something completely different. How they divided that up, 
I have no idea. Go ahead and put that down in the comments if you know, because I'm a little bit at a loss for that. Obviously, it comes down to money. Yeah, that's it. Let's start out with electric. And I'm going to show you up on the screen two electric bills over the year, my bills over the year. And why there's two is one when I was a snowbird or earlier on, and one was when I started staying down here um, more time. So on the left is full time and on the right is snowbird. Those are the two. And then I, I'll go over these in a second, but also take a look at the usage. So here's a usage graph for, for me. And I get my electric energy from Duke. Now, this is uh, for service as an actual bill for service from October through November. And if you look, my previous uh, bill was just about $200 for electric. And you can see my usage history on the graph down below. And this month's bill is for electric. Now, this is electric only is 145 and it pays to look down and i'll explain a little bit to you this is the third actually third page that's on the bill but it pays to look down and check things out because if you look down here in the center of it it says billing details and i don't want to go in depth into this but it says billing details, products, and services. If you can check this out, it says surge protection added coverage two ninety nine. Surge protection added coverage two ninety nine, and then surge protection. I'll explain what these are in a second. Well, when I looked at the bill, I thought that's weird. How come there's two ninety nine twice? So I actually ended up calling them back and I said, "Hey, what's going on?" And they had double charged me. So. Sometimes it pays. Uh, fortunately, it was only a $2.99 part, but they're going to credit me everything back for that. And I'll explain what this is. This deals with lightning and surge protection. As all you know, Florida is pretty much one of the lightning capitals of the world, and we get some pretty good strikes around here. And while well, I'm thinking about it, Speaking of strikes, here's a picture of one right back up behind Bob's house. And remember, Bob's going to come talk to us about the expenses of pools. But I had a little extra surge protection put onto my house. I should probably do a video about the stuff that I've done here. And But what they do is they come in and for the $7.99, they put this ring around your meter. And basically that ring has a block, a surge protection coming into the house. And then you can pay an additional $2.99 for monetary coverage. In other words, if something gets damaged, it's but it's it's kind of weak, whatever it is. It's like $1,000 per incidence, $2,000 or $1,000 per item, $2,000 max, and $20,000 over the year or something like that. I, I can't remember what it was, but it wasn't much, but it was... $3, but I also have surge protectors on everything around here. With that said, let's move on to gas, see where we are with gas. Gas is pretty easy. It comes from Leesburg. Uh, kind of, I guess it comes right from the town. I don't know. They, I guess they have control over it. But anyway, this is a regular bill. And then I'm also going to show you, the, and this is the just a monthly bill from October, November time frame. But this is a, um, a total from the year. And you, you want to look at the current charges there, the second from the right, because I had some credits and stuff like that in there. And um, basically, you can see it's just right around $30 a month. Now, let's talk about sewer and water, which is two types of water. And I'm going to explain a little bit about that. And remember, at the end of this, I'll kind of give a total of all these things, what they cost in, in the villages. We'll kind of revamp and go over all this really quick. And don't forget, we got Bob coming up here in a little bit to talk about the pool thing. Anyway, um, I, I need to read you a little part that's at the bottom of the bill really quick because it kind of explains how things work around here. And here we go. Utility systems in the villages north of that. 
SR44 are owned by the VC, DD, 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 DD. Okay, there's different utility districts. Uh, they have their own rates and established by rules adopted by their respective boards. Since I live south of 44, with along a bunch of other people that are privately owned, have their rates approved by the Florida Public Service Commission or adopted by the utility as applicable. So I showed you a map up there to show you what south of 44 is. So these different areas are controlled by different things. But I'm going to show you a bill for me, what my bill is here. And if you take a look at this, you can see the upper part of it is water usage and base. So this basically deals with the um, water usage itself. Now, there are two types of water. This is potable water. This is what you are drinking. And so you can see the total of that's about $24, $25, $26, dollars, somewhere in there. It runs, it fluctuates. There's a little chart down on the bottom left there of the bill that shows you what the averages were over the last year. But there's also a irrigation use and base. So base means that's just going to start out with $996. And as your usage goes up, you're going to tack onto that, which... That total comes as far as, now that's just water to irrigate the lawn, which is outside water. And that is a total of, that's what your sprinklers work on. And that's about, you know, 25, 26 bucks, somewhere in there. Then you also have sewage usage on this uh, base. I mean, it's not something you use, you use to get rid of your waste, but the base for that is 20 and my usage is about 14, 15 bucks a run. So that's about $35. Now we'll talk about amenity fee in a bit, but sanitation collection is also on here. And that is $22.91 for uh, each year for everybody south of SR44. It's basically $23. Really quick, so I don't have to go over it, as far as the trash goes, so you know, here in the villages, you, we don't have trash cans. We don't want a bunch of stinky old smelly trash cans. So they come around twice a week, and they'll pick up your trash. My day is Monday and Thursdays. For my neighborhood, it's usually kind of earlier in the morning, but you just take your trash, put it out on the edge of the street, and you leave it. And there's, I haven't heard too many problems with animals, but if some people have had problems, go ahead and put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it because we definitely have animals around here. So that's that. Now, this bill, as you can see, this particular one came out to about $300. And I averaged all mine together. And that's, don't forget, this includes the amenity fee also. They comes out to about $290 or so for me. Now, I'm going to add in that caveat that for the most part of the year, it's a single-use person in this house, so I, I don't, um, I'm not very conservative about things. I'll flush the toilet when I need to, and uh, the only thing is, is I do take a couple showers because at least a couple showers, sometimes three showers a day because I do play a lot of sports and stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. So let, let's jump back and take a look at the whole utility thing, and we'll compare that to what the villages says my utility should be. Here we go. And I'll flash up here the villages. Now, you can get this on uh, villages.com, or you can just Google cost of living in the villages. It'll come up on uh, Google or Bing or whatever you're going to do. Anyway, there, remember what we talked about. There's a total of the monthly amenity fee, the trash collection, which is the same for everybody. The monthly amenity fee is $189. Mine's slightly less because I started a while ago. The average sewer for everybody is pretty much the same. And the average water will vary. I would, I obviously, a single guy, and you know, I tend to make sure my lawn is watered because the cost to repair that lawn when it gets messed up is a lot more. And the average gas and electric. You have to remember that, one, I'm single. I have gas and electric. Some people just have electric. And, uh, you know, as far as showering and stuff, depending during the summer, I'll shower up to three times. I get up in the morning, shower, go play sports, shower. 
come back and shower. And so I'm good for at least two showers a day. Um, and, you know, I only have one person's clothes to wash, that type of thing. So if you're going to do more or you're going to have a pool, remember we're going over to talk to Bob to see what his bills are, it's going to be slightly different. So with all that said, the village's total comes up to 351, and that's on average. And my total comes out to 397. So I'm about 40, 50, 50 bucks more or something like that. And, you know, I, I, I really do sleep with this house cold at night. I don't watch the air conditioning. I don't pay attention. I rarely have the doors open except to air things out. And during the winter, I start to open them up a little more. But um, if you're wondering about electricity and stuff like that, you when you leave, and even if you're a snowbird, you have to keep the air conditioning on. And the reason is for mildew. The last thing you want to do is start getting mildew in the house. So don't leave the house without having uh, some way to de dehumidify it. And that's about it. So that covered a lot of stuff. Let's talk quickly since we've been talking about the annual amenity fee, what that covers for you for those that don't know. And I'll just, that'll be really quick. Amenity fee. Yeah, this, this definitely gets um, a lot of thought processes going, but right now it's $189 for new people moving into the villages. And if you saw mine on the last thing, mine right now is 171. And that the reason that is, is because it is increased by the compu computer consumer price index. And so as mine's increased by the price index, it's up to 171 or something like that. But if you move in new, it's 189 and then yours will increase like that from there. But the question is a lot of times, what does it exactly cover? And a lot of people don't understand this. And I'm gonna read right off of their website. As you can see, one, one uh, low monthly amenity fee, $189 to enjoy. Free golf on the executive courses, that's the nine hole courses, swimming, pickleball, tennis, corn, Corn toss and bocce, yeah, I love the pickleball. Indoor and outdoor recreational facilities can be located throughout the community, and they're huge, really nice facilities, and small one, the postal areas. Dog parks, uh, parks, fishing areas, miles of nature's trails, which you've seen some of my videos on those, 24-hour neighborhood watch service, and more stuff like the gate guards and um, what we already said, community watch you know, stuff like that that's around that's happening. Now, I like to think of putting together this um, amenity fee with the maintenance, the bond maintenance fee, kind of makes loosely kind of a way of uh, HOA fee, if you want to think about it that way, but we don't have HOAs here, but that may be what you may include in, in a lot of HOAs. Now, we're going to go talk to Bob about pool. We're going to go see what his electrical bill is and you guys can compare it to what I have, and maybe he'll talk about some extra costs that he has in one building his pool, and I'll tell you what it costs to build a pool now, kind of loosely, and uh, well, let's jump over and talk to him. <laughs> and just like that magic, we're over at Bob's place, and just in case you didn't know, or actually Bob and Liz, is, she does live here with him, <laughs> and we dress in the same colors, so I guess we're like team pool people, but anyway. That's my place over there, in case you didn't know. I can tell what they're watching for TV sometimes. <laughs> oh, oh, only kidding. Um, yeah, so in, in case you don't know it, this is Bob of the fame Bob and Liz when we go out and do the restaurant reviews. And we also did a, a tour through their house. God, it's got to be over a year ago, right? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah which, which is pretty cool. Um, so if you haven't seen that, it's kind of fun to go in uh, I know Bob didn't do any decorating, so it's, it's no, Liz that did it. It's all Liz. Liz, yes. Liz did the decorating. She gets all so, credit for that. Yeah, so if you want to watch that, I'll, I'll put the link to it. <clears throat> um, we're going to talk about the pool and the cost of a pool. But first, first thing we're going to talk about is when you bought the pool, mm -hmm. I, I got to say this too, he's an accountant. So he's <laughs> actually got, this is small, he's actually got the whole spreadsheet on the, uh, on <laughs> on the pool. Costs, yeah. yeah, so he's on top of everything here. Uh, w when you put the pool in, how much was the pool to begin with? Uh, I had budgeted 100000 And is that pretty much what it came out with? came out to 99 and the picture that you took there. Right, so yeah, the, the, the picture was a little extra, and then you got a hot tub too. 
Uh, yeah, that was part of it. That was part of the pool. So yep. it kind of came as a as a package. Now the whole thing, bird cage, pool, bird cage, yep. the pool, and everything. So Every, con- everything out here. Right. Contrasting that with uh, I'm doing that uh, video right now. If you haven't watched that, the cost of building a premier custom home over in the enclave with uh, Liz or Liz, <laughs> uh, Ashley and Ray. They're at about 150 something for for their, their pool. Now it is a large pool. Uh, a little bit more area, but you can tell there's been a rise in, right. in, in definitely in the prices. Um, all right, so with that said, let's talk about the cost of running this thing once you get it up. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, when you, is there any insurance? Did you notice any that, that was notable? No, not really. The homeowners, uh, they had all the information uh, on the site, pool, birdcage. Uh, homeowners insurance came in almost exactly what we were paying back in St. Louis. Right. Okay. So, so nothing. So, nothing. You know, it wasn't a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars jump or anything. It was right. Just all included. So was your? It, I don't know whether you remember or not, but was your homeowners here about the same as it was up in St. Louis? Mm-hmm. So pretty, pretty much the same. So that's kind yeah. of a good if if you want to look at that. Yeah. And. Um, so we did, did insurance. What about utility bills? You notice anything more with the utility? Yeah, I would say uh, I watched a lot of the trying to figure out a budget for uh, for pool maintenance and right. for for gas and electric. And I was pretty pretty close to uh, I guess what what it would have been uh, without a pool. Right. So you're you're with um, you just have. We've got you have gas and electric on the same company. Right, with City of Leesburg. Right, we, yes. which is what I said earlier with my utilities, um, gas with one company and electric with another. Yeah. So what's your total gas and electric bill? Uh, the electric bill runs, last year ran an uh, average of 213 a month. 213. For electric. And, uh, and our electric bill back in St. Louis was a lot more than that. Uh, gas was 56 bucks a month. All right, so, and... Gas, you run anything on the pool? Uh, we do have a gas heater on the pool, and that's right. that's why it's, you know as far as we have a spillover that runs eight hours a day, right? So that takes some electric, um, and uh, and then if we want to heat the pool in the winter time, uh, it is you know it has the pool heater has to run probably about four hours to to get it up about the swimming uh, level. Yes, but you also have a solar have up solar. on the roof, which yep. does what extends a little bit. Extends it uh, before really the swimming season about a month, and about a month afterwards, so you'll have you'll get enough solar heat without using work, without, without using, having yep. without using heat. So yep, the gas. Um, so if you had to just guesstimate. How much more do you think your electricity probably would be versus without a pool? What, what do you think? You know, I would say about twenty dollars a month, maybe on the electric, right? And uh, maybe twenty bucks on the on the gas too. Yeah. So so not not all that yeah. much. We got a gas stove, but we don't. You know, I mean, other than cooking uh, here and there, and uh, uh, gas dryer. So okay. Now the other question is the maintenance of the pool. You don't do any yourself now, right? I you know, a pool I, company coming? Yeah, I, was, I thought I would do it, but uh, as far as a lot of the chemical readings, uh, I just figured it'd be easier. Won't have to mess with it. Um, with watching a lot of the YouTube videos, it looked like it was an average of $150 a month maintenance for pool. Right, you think that's about right? Uh, yeah, the first company I had uh, charged $158 a month. And, uh, you know, they come in and uh, they clean your filter. There's a big pool filter out by the equipment right. there. Uh, they should do that monthly. Uh, they empty the, there's a, uh, uh, a skimmer basket here. There's a basket out by the pool equipment. Uh, they uh, skim the surface of the pool, the vacuum, vacuum the bottom of the pool, and then they'll clean the tile around the tub and the pool uh, with a brush. Uh, they'll go ahead and take uh, take the readings, and then depending on what the readings are, they'll add the chemicals. So, right, and then they replace the main filter. They replace uh, the the first company. I wasn't happy with they they weren't showing up. 
be a new person every time, so right. we, we switched to... Uh, a lot of those companies have changed ownership and stuff like yes, that, too, yeah, now, right? Yeah. So And the first company, like I said, was 100. Are you happy? Happy now with it? Very happy. Okay, and Very you happy. might as well say it, because people are going to ask me, what company is that? Uh, T&D, T&D VIP Pool Service. Okay. So There we go. So is there anything else we missed? Uh, no. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, no, that's about it. Water. Oh, yeah, wa yeah. water. Uh, water bill. Um, I had budgeted... <laughs> Twenty dollars a month, and uh, you do have to uh, budget a little bit extra uh, or more. My my water bill runs about sixty-five dollars a month. Now I'm not going to say the pool is costing that much. Uh, uh, between right. company, uh, when you say sixty-five do do dollars, you're talking about potable water, yeah, right? Potable, 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 water. potable, <laughs> potable, potable. <laughs> but the drinkable end. Yes, but we have an auto flow on the pool, so you know if it gets low. It automatically fills it up. Okay. Uh, you know, during the summer, it gets hot. You, I think you get a lot of evaporation. So uh, even though, the, you know, you do get you rain. get a lot more rain. Yeah. So that, that's about it then, yeah. right? Yep. So that's it. You thank Bob for that one. And All you got to uh, do is jump in and swim. I don't have to do anything else. There, there, you, there, there you go. So um, anyway, that's kind of cool. We're going to jump back to the computer and finish this out. Um, not sure what we're working on, but I'll get back to the house. Thank you, sir. That's it. Okay. And we'll, we'll see him on the next restaurant <laughs> review. Or, or we'll be at Mystic Ice Cream. <laughs> Once I get over this cold. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I want to thank Bob for doing that. That was really nice of him. Also, while I'm thinking of it, his cost right now per month for his pool care, like he said, he pretty much has to jump in and, and go swim, is about 188 and I also need to say there's been a lot of uh, ownership of different pool companies and stuff like that. So be cautious about who you pick and for your maintenance people about who you pick also. Anyway, next up is insurance. Now, everybody has different levels of insurance that makes them feel comfortable. I am not an insurance agent. You need to do your own investigation on this, but we're going to talk about Homeowner's insurance, sinkhole insurance, uh, maybe you want to think about an a umbrella policy, flood insurance, I'll tell you a little story that I had, auto insurance, uh, has it gone up from Pennsylvania, and golf cart insurance, and a story I have from right now about my golf cart insurance that needs to be revisited thanks to doing this video. Then we'll jump on to DMV and uh, talk a little bit about cars coming in here, but let's uh, start out with the homeowner's insurance and I'll show you exactly what I pay and some things to think about. This is, uh, if you care, I'm with USAA, as you can probably figure out somewhere on here it is, but this is my coverage for my homeowner's policy, just about close to $1,000 a year. And if you look at this, this will give you an idea of where some of my numbers stand now. By no means is this telling you that this is what you should do. Everybody's different. Everybody's home value is different. Everybody's current market value. And rebuild is totally different. Also, the type of structure you have. I am a block and stucco type of build, so that's about it. And also, if you look on here, personal belongings, I have a certain amount of personal belongings in here because of, you know, my, my camera gear, some of it, printers, all, all that, that stuff. So you have to look and see what you have in your home and obviously talk to a agent because I'm in bo by no means an agent. And um, but basically, it's about $1,000 a year. I know there's been some stuff in here about homeowners and flood insurance, so I might as well talk about flood insurance here really quick. My story is when I first moved in here, my sales agent said, who was a village representative, said, villages don't, don't build on floodplain. So uh, I am right behind a pond, so I was a little worried about that. And FEMA had done their update for my home. Now, they had built up the ground underneath, so it took it up above the floodplain, but FEMA hadn't registered yet. So the first year that I had to uh, insure my home, I had to get flood insurance. And if I remember correctly, that was about 400 and some dollars. 
So next year, I won't get flood in insurance because I just don't think about it where I sit. And, um, you know, you have to make that evaluation about where you sit, how close you are to the floodplain, and also whether your mortgage company makes you get it. Keeping in theme with the village's estimate of costs, they say that it's about $120 a month for insurance, average insurance in a courtyard villa. Drum roll, please. And mine comes out to, my actual amount comes out to 87. So for once, I am cheaper than, than the villages. But like I said, it all depends on what kind of coverage they have in there. Something that always gets asked about down here is sinkhole coverage. And I got to say this again, I am not an agent, but this is the way I understand it. You need to check into it yourself. Let, let's take a look at this. Uh, many homeowners assume that their home insurance policy covers sinkhole damage, but is generally not the case. Standard homeowners insurance policies you do, usually do not include sinkhole coverage. So there's different types of coverage. Sinkholes are technically a form of earth movement, which is not covered by peril. Under most home insurance policies, sinkholes are generally treated like earthquakes in terms of insurance coverage. There are two main types of sinkhole insurance, sinkhole loss coverage and catastrophic ground coverage collapse. That's a mouthful right there. Let's take a look at uh, catastrophic ground cover collapse coverage. Um, catastrophic ground cover covers and protects your home if it falls into sinkholes and the foundation is damaged beyond repair. To qualify for this, and this is important, uh, catastrophic ground collapse coverage, your home must be condemned by a local government agency. So let's take a look at this. What is sinkhole law in Florida? And I just found this on the internet. This section of Florida statute requires authorized insurers to cover catastrophic ground coverage collapse, but damage outside of catastrophic ground coverage collapse caused by sinkholes may not... Be covered by your policy if it does not specifically include sinkhole coverage. So what does that mean? That's where the sinkhole loss coverage comes in. Now, I personally don't have sinkhole loss coverage. This is something you probably got to investigate yourself. But what is it? I will read it from the definition. Sinkhole loss coverage protects homeowners from structural damage to their home resulting from confirmed sinkhole activity. Sinkhole loss coverage is different from catastrophic gown coverage, which automatically is included in most citizens' policies. So that's the way my policy is. It is included in my homeowner's policy, the catastrophic ground coverage. But just to review, I believe that your home has to be completely, pretty much demolished. The foundation and the sinkhole has to be under it that type of thing, um, but definitely investigate this one yourself. But like I said, that is included in my standard homeowner policy. Real quick, I just want to mention this and I'll let you know what mine costs and that is an umbrella policy, which is a liability policy. If you don't know what that is, probably need to call your agent. Like I said, I, I am not, I can't help you out with questions on these insurance policy things. Um, mine costs $450 a year. And just think of that as, if you don't know what it is, it's like a liability policy to protect you that covers a lot of stuff. And it's in addition to other policies, if you have them, that they kind of intertwine with that. And you can buy them in millions. When you do it, make sure you check because a lot of times, you know, you'll be covered for one million. And if you jump it up to two or three million as protection liability, it may cost you like $20 a year or more. I don't know. You'll have to talk to an agent on that. On to the next one, we're going to talk about automobile insurance and whether my insurance increased from Pennsylvania to Florida. Whew, this is getting long. We're including a lot of stuff in here. Don't forget, if you're at this part, you can always scrub down the bottom and go because they're divided up into chapters. So you can, you can do that if you scrub along the timeline, the ch chapters will come up. Let's talk car insurance, and then we're going to jump right into what it costs to bring a car in here and show you what the DMV was on those and registration. Uh, I have a 23 Chevrolet Avalanche, as you can tell by this, and this is for a six-month policy, $864, $65. 
And as you can see, I have comprehensive collision, $1,000 deductible on each, and I have my Florida driver's license. And the car is located here in the villages. Now, I, everybody's got different car insurance, so it's going to vary all over the place. But what I will tell you, and here is the, the big question that I get all the time, did your car insurance go up when you went to Florida? And yes, without a doubt. So I'm at about $1,700 right here, $1,600, $1,700 or so, $1,700. And my, my car insurance in Pennsylvania, it's kind of hard to tell because I had some motorcycle stuff in there and you know it's kind of a look back, but well, probably was about $400 cheaper. Now, everybody's got different insurance companies too. I'm with USAA different deductibles and that type of thing, but at least this will give you um, an idea. Now, looking all the way down the bottom of my policy, you can see my golf cart is on there, and I have kind of heavy golf cart insurance. I'm not 100% why I did that, but I did, and I'm probably going to change it because for you guys, I went out and actually went over to Progressive and I looked up a policy, a yearly policy for that from them. And this was for 12 months. And this is a couple of little tiny things extra on there. Uh, $127. But if you get the choice, there's different levels. You can see if you look up at the top. And, you know, 80 bucks for the year. So golf cart insurance is pretty cheap. I will jump over to them probably this year once my policy is up at the end of the year and uh, give them a try. Let's take a look at uh, bringing a car into Florida and uh, what the, because there is an initial cost for that and the uh, actual yearly registration. Before I even get started, there is a video. You're going to see it right here, right on the screen. And I did a whole video on becoming a Florida resident. So if you're thinking about doing it, please watch that video because I've had people write to me and say, oh man, I didn't realize I had to do this and I didn't have, I had to do that. And all these things in there are to protect you and make sure you do them right and it doesn't cost you a whole lot of money. But with that said, this is gonna be just about the cost. I'm gonna show you a couple of the costs. And we already know that my insurance went up. Um, I hope yours doesn't, but mine did. But there is an initial cost when you bring your car in to Florida, and here it is, initial registration. A $225 initial registration fee is imposed. First time license plate is purchased for the vehicle. And if you want a special plate, that's gonna cost a little more. Uh, this applies to private automobiles, motorhomes, trucks, uh, less than 5,000 pounds with an out-of-state Florida title. Also, make sure that you check if you've just bought a car and you bring it in, there may be sales tax involved in that. You need to check the timing on that and uh, be careful of that if you're buying a new house. With that said, here's a, just a quick flash of the, the motor vehicle registration fees. And this is your yearly of fees, and you can do that a couple years in a row. So I buy my, my things out uh, a couple years, and that just kind of makes it easier on you. So moving on, let's talk pest termites because when you first buy a new home here, it comes with, and it, well, it did when I bought it, I'm assuming it's still the same. It comes with a bond and it's a termite bond that says basically, we put a bunch of stuff into the house to keep termites away. And this bond lasts for a specific period of time. Well, with that, you, and that's for, I, I'm not gonna get in, into all the stuff, but just know you have the cost of, if you want to add on to the policy, which I did, which is $300, where they go up in the attic and they spray everything up there. So you have that protection. Now you have to pay for that to keep it up every year. So I pay $166 each year and an inspector comes out and he looks at everything to make sure I don't have any termites. But this is a picture uh, or a, a shot of the extra additional coverage that I have. And I had it from Massey. Now, I also have right now, I had all kinds of coverage. I took everything the first year and I did a lot of, ended up doing a lot of the stuff for myself, but I have for $75 every quarter, a guy comes by and dusts 
underneath the underneath the eaves. The problem is they really don't put anything up there. They just dust it off. So if you have any spiders and stuff like that, you got to kind of control them yourself. My suggestion is after the first year, go out and do a bunch of research for yourself and find out exactly what you feel you need. I can tell you right now, I had a lot of spiders in the beginning, but as they told me after everything kind of kicks in and you've stopped disturbing their area, the spiders kind of don't come around all that much. At least that's what I found. Anyway, that's it for bugs. Let's talk about lawn care because it kind of was wrapped up in the same thing when I got started. Let's talk lawn care and I'll tell you what I've learned about lawn care uh, in, in the meantime over the last couple of years. And it's kind of combined with the whole bug thing because Massey will come in and sell you a thing in the beginning that takes care of everything, which is what I wanted the first year. I didn't want to worry about anything. I just wanted to get everything done. So I just bought everything. Now it's, it, it's a little different. So take a look at this right now. And this kind of sums up everything, putting it in with a termite. The cost to get your lawn cut. My, my lawn was about $60 to $75. So that's, that's monthly. And then landscape application, which was fertilizer kind of thing. And, you know, weed killer, that, that, that type of thing was $35 monthly. Irrigation maintenance was 45 quarterly, so $15 monthly. And what that was is the guy came by and checked all the sprinklers, made sure that they were all working right, and set them, that type of thing. My pest prevention, like I said, was $75 quarterly, but they, they like the guy said, they're not allowed to spray anything up under the eaves and stuff like that. I went and had to do that all myself. So I can just tell you right now, I'm about the end of that. They'll do things inside if you ask them. And I'll tell you what, I know a lot of you folks probably have questions about bugs down here. I have absolutely, well, pretty much zero. I just have these little tiny caterpillar looking tiny things that like at one part of the year, one month, they, for some reason, they can sneak in a little bit, but not much. You know, they just show up kind of dead someplace, but that was 25 monthly. And then the termite prevention, which is 166 after the initial payment of $300, uh, comes out to about 14, so 150 bucks a month. Now, obviously, that has to do with the size of my property. And I will tell you one thing: if you have a small courtyard type thing, they still come in with the giant lawnmower that they stand on, and it's they banged into my wall, they banged into my fence, they started putting ruts in the yard, and so my neighbor and I worked out a deal where we got a lawnmower we just do ourselves, and it literally takes me to do my lawn and his lawn probably 45 minutes at the most once a week. And then during the winter time, it is, uh, boy, you, we have Pro Vista, St. Augustine grass, and you barely have to do any maintenance to it at all. With, I'm putting a big caveat on that. There is a big problem with cinch bugs around here. And if you, I did a video on that. So look at, uh, I'll put this right on the back on the thing again. Take a look at that because it's really important. I mean, really important. There's people that have lost snowbirds that have gone away and uh, they come back two months later and their lawn's gone. So it's worth watching that if you have any desire or make sure you have somebody watching it and stay on their butts about your lawn. Don't, you know, once you see a little mark out there, you let them know, hey, I got weeds here. I see a, a spot here so on and so on, so stay on their butt. So anyway, that's that's lawn care. Obviously, if you have a, one of these huge corner lots, um, uh, you're gonna you're gonna be a lot more than $75. Not a lot more, but more. And there are plenty of lawn care companies when you get down here, ask people. If not, start searching around. Okay, uh, moving on. Stuff's gonna start coming by really fast right now. Closely related to the landscaping bugs, that kind of thing, is palm trees. And if you're somebody that has palm trees, you can figure they got to get trimmed every once in a while. And I'm saying right around 20, 25 bucks, um, and maybe 20 bucks a, a month to get get to, to get a tree trimmed. And that'll vary depending on the palm tree, what needs to be done. If you have to have one removed or you want to take one out, I think it's like 75 Seven hundred dollars to maybe about fifteen hundred dollars, 
And then also power washing your house. That you can figure about maybe $120 to do that. It really depends on the house and what type of power washing. Some guys come in and actually scrub the house down. But you'll find that, especially on the panel, the siding homes, then on the sides that don't have sun, you'll start to see a little green start to show up. Um, mold sort of thing. Not mold, but, you, you know, the, the green stuff. Mossy kind of stuff. So you have to have that power washed. And like I said, we're going to start talking. Oh, one more thing, too. Newspaper. I get a newspaper. I love getting the newspaper because it just kind of tells me everything that's going on and keep track of everything. I know there's a bunch of ways to do it otherwise, but it's only 90 bucks a year. For you snowbirds, when you leave, you just call them up and say, I don't want it right now, and they suspend it. I think I spent $90 over a two-year period on the newspaper because I was going back and forth so much. You may take a look at this one and go, oh, he changed clothes. That's because this is taking a long time to do and actually spread out over three days. I'm pretty much working on the thing the whole time, so make sure you please subscribe and please punch that like button if this is helping you out at all. And don't be afraid. Share this with people that are thinking about coming down here or already down here. So let's talk about activities because activities, depending on how involved you are with different things, can... Kind of start to mount up a little bit. First of all, I belong to a bunch of different clubs, you know, photography clubs and art clubs. I belong to the singles club. Now, they're not horribly expensive, but, you know, they do have a little administration fees to them sometimes. So I've got about $10, $10 monthly in there. Another thing that is big for folks is golf. And golf can add up a little bit in different ways. Um it, there's a couple of different expenses to golf. You can take and look at the golf rates. So there's two different types of golf courses. There are executive courses, which are the uh, nine-hole courses, and then there's the championship courses, and this is barring the pitch and putt or the uh, putting greens. And here's a – I'm just going to flash this up here so you can see the golf rates for uh, – these are for, like kind of country club rate kind of things – and you can dive into that if you want, but you get, although you can go to all the clubs, there's certain amenities that will help you out by joining the country club rates. And there they are right now. Now, if you're going to a person that hits a lot of golf balls, here's prices of golf balls. You know, the smallest um, costs you about five bucks a bucket, and the largest is about 15 bucks a bucket. And there's actually, this is the championship golf rates for uh, 2023. Now, obviously, they fluctuate and change. You need to dive into that. But there's also a fee for the golf.net or whatever. People always make my reservations for me, asking me to come join them in a group. And so I never do it, although I do pay for it. It's $8 a month. But there's two different ways that you can... Um, Schedule golf, you know, golf around the villages, and one you can use that online system, and that basically costs you eight dollars a month. You can do it by phone; it's free, but it is tedious, from what I hear. I've never even went went to try it. So, also there are trail fees. So, in other words, if you go to play the executive courses and you walk, they are free. But if you take a golf cart, they charge you a $4 fee, trail fee, to go do that. Or you can pay for the whole thing um, by the year. You can pay it and you can play as many times. And here's the rates for that. So anyway, those are things to consider. And of course, if you have these activities, you've got to go someplace in your golf cart. So let's talk about golf carts. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's kind of fun. Not not quite the way my golf cart sounds, but it, it works pretty good. New golf cart. If you're planning on buying a new golf cart, I've seen them anywhere from the cheaper end up at Walmart, Home Depot. They're all trying to get in on the act here, seven, eight thousand dollars, all the way up to twenty some thousand dollars. If you buy a nice golf cart at Yamaha, you can put that in the comments. Your experience. I love the. Love to hear her about what everybody's paying for them. Also, please make sure that when you're buying a golf cart, you check the height of it because some of them, if you're living up north, won't get underneath the, unless they're standard, underneath the tunnels, 
With that said, oil change and that type of thing, I've got 20 bucks a month here. And the only, so if, if, you know, if you pay the whole thing for your golf cart, you pay cash, you won't have a payment, but you may have a golf cart payment if you want. We already talked about insurance up above. It should cost you under $100 a year. But there's also different types of little kind of security things that you can get, like 20, 25, 30 bucks a month or something like that for golf cart tow insurance. I don't have anything like that. So that's about it, really, for the golf cart. Uh, fuel is, man, it's, it's as far as uh, the, the the gas ones go, I, I hardly spend anything, but I, I imagine you could probably spend 10, 15 bucks a month. They go 200 miles. Depends on how far you drive them. I don't drive mine a whole lot. I usually drive my car if it's any distance. On to the next thing. Next big expense that you definitely want to include in this is if you have a car payment. Fortunately, I have a 10-year-old Avalanche that uh, is just 10 years old now and is has a quarter of a million miles on it, but I got to keep that up. So maintenance, I really don't put in here because I'll, t- I'll tell you what, except for oil change, I haven't had to do anything to this truck. It's just been a, a, a beautiful thing. Anyway, fuel, on the other hand, cost me, especially since I run around a lot and uh, I put in there basically $100 a month. Oil change, $10 monthly, and car wash. Uh, there are places around here where you can buy a ticket to get you know as many washes as you need per month. Um, currently up in Kennet, I have mine, which obviously I don't use anywhere near as much because I'm pretty much full-time down here in Florida, but that's $30 a month. And then also you got AAA, and I use that. And as far as the car expenses go, Remember, I put up in the other section under insurance, and that's obviously going to be different for everybody. But you may want to include maintenance in here. I did not include it personally because over the years, I have had very little maintenance. There is one big monkey in the room bouncing around there, and that is the medical expenses. Now, everybody's can be different on this, and every year can be different. This is done right around Thanksgiving, so we're right in the heart of when you need to sign up or re-up for your plans and decide what you're doing for the next year. So please, if you haven't watched the videos that I did right over here with Crystal, please go watch them. You're going to learn a lot. People have come up to me and told me that constantly say, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. There's actually three of them, but for me, I'll put up here basically what I've expensed out because sometimes it just jogs your memory and you go, oh God, yeah, I got to do that or I got to do this. But anyway, for medical, for me, um, luckily I haven't had too many expenses. And as you know, I started kind of a new way of life, new dieting on a carnivore diet, which I'll come out with another video soon. But anyway, uh, Medicare is pretty much $176 monthly for me. And I have a Plan G that costs me 186 So that, I know, is coming no matter what. My dental, I don't have dental insurance. I figure I've kind of evened out over the years, but uh, I put in there 50 bucks a month anyway. I care. I am so lucky. I just went to the doctor to go get my yearly uh, wellness check, as they call it. And she said I was 2015, 2013. So that means I'm still better than 70, 70, uh, 2020, 70, 70. And I don't believe that, but I don't have to wear glasses because uh, I don't read that much anymore. I listen to audio books. And prescriptions, 100 monthly. Now, people may ask me, uh, Crystal just informed me, who was in, in those videos, that my plan went to zero this year, which is great. I don't have to pay that each each month, so I don't have anything but my prescriptions. I do now that I, even though I'm not diabetic, I use this, which is a CGM monthly that costs me about $82 monthly. And then I have a couple of little scripts that I pay um, a couple of bucks for, but that's it. Not too much. Um, I'm lucky at this point. But anyway, that's it. You need to add that in. You need to keep track of that. And you also, whoever your agent is or broker, Um, They probably should have called you by now to discuss what uh, is best for you next year. If not, give Crystal a call. Anyway, on to the next one. And I already know what it is, so I'll just say it here. 
Software. Um, if you have any types of software that you need to budget in, I use Adobe, so that costs me um, about $50, $60 a month. Microsoft costs me 100 bucks for the year, and I have some weather apps that I use that cost me about 150 bucks for the year. So they can add up a little bit, so make sure you include those things for your computer or if you're planning on upgrading a computer. Also, I use a backup system for my, which everybody should be doing because this is really cheap. I'll actually put a link down below this. Um, I use a company called Backblaze, cost me about five bucks a month or whatever, and I'm completely backed up. Everything, multiple drives and, and everything, so I'll put that link down below. <sighs> On to the next one, and the next one could be big. The reason I say big is because this is just a thorn in my side that if you think about how much this is, cable and internet. So I actually have, uh, I still have internet up north in Kennett Square because I still have an apartment up there. I don't even want to think about what that's costing me now, but we may cut that out soon. Uh, so my internet up there is $76.00 a month. And down in the villages, it is $191 a month. And I don't even get to watch half of my Eagles games that I like. So definitely a thorn in my side. And cell phone bill is about $77 monthly. And take a look at my bill right here. And the reason I say discounts on there, because you got to keep pestering them every year. And I went in and I, I, I use a lot of data up, especially when I do the storm chasing thing and that type type of stuff, because I do broadcast live. But uh, my my cell phone, I get a discount is normally about $100. But for military, I get almost a 25%, 20 some percent discount from the regular price. So it pays to call them up once a year and kind of pester them. Hey, do you have any special deals? I'm military. I'm this. I'm that. Help me out here. And a lot of times you'll find out that they will. So if you think about that, 20 some, 20 some dollars, it's about $260. That's a couple of good nights out and a couple of good steaks. That's, that's, uh, that's a good thing, right? Anyway, let's keep pressing on. Here's another one that's kind of a monthly thing and probably more often for some people, and that is haircuts for the men and ladies. Now, I have no idea what it would cost to get to a lady's haircut. I know they do colorings and trims and this and that, fingernails, that type of thing. So you're going to have to plug your own numbers in here. But I can tell you, I go to Cal's and uh, up by Colony Cottage, uh, just a barber shop up there, and use the same guy. So I don't know, maybe $21 a month. That's about how much a haircut costs with a tip. And like I said, I have no idea with the, with the ladies. Maybe you can put that in the comments down below because it, it would be kind of funny because, I mean, I really have zero idea. But the next thing right now is the gym and the spa. Now, the reason I put the spa in there, I'll show you a clip from this in a second. Um, but the gym... All of the outdoor workout facilities are free. In other words, you can go around and use those and obviously anything out there. But there are, and I'll put a little cost thing up here for you, um, at some of the select rec centers, the larger rec centers, there are gyms there that have more stuff in them. And there are, you can either do those by the month or you can do by year. There's also, I believe it's MVP or whatever up in Brownwood, which is a lot larger. And also, if you've got the right, like I do, um, my, my drug plan, I think it is, or, or my plan G or whatever with my Medicare also gives me a membership at some local gyms. There you go. That's that one. And um, the spa... The, the spa, let me, let me, this is, I'll put the, the video. I did a video with Gloria. Gloria and I went on Valentine's Day, went to a couple spa, and I'll play this, this kind of video right now, and you'll get to see it, and I'll tell you what I think about it afterwards. Just two-second clip. Now, Gloria's over there. There's no way she's going to let me point the camera over there, but 
They stick you under a sheet, or they don't stick you there. They go out of the room, and then you get under here. So this is, she's laughing. And then I guess you go like this. So, but well decorated, some nice music in the background. And this was a couple massage. It was great. And then this is the cool part. We got oh yeah, I gotta get that. massages, and we got mimosas, and life is good. <laughs> you guys were great. Thank you. What a great, what a great, what a great experience. Yeah, that was definitely a lot of fun, and it was a great experience. You can find uh, the Brownwood Hotel and Spa. You can find out their prices on there. Uh, that they're all different kinds of stuff. But I'll tell you what, it was well worth it. It was a couple's massage. And if you're thinking about a good gift for the holidays, uh, I would give it a shot. Anyway, let's find out what other things are going to cost us some money in just plain old living. These next few are going to come in kind of rapid fire. Don't forget, I'm going to put a list of all these towards the end. Probably scroll through it with a little music so you can listen to it. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to put it down in the description where you can copy and paste it. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, let's get started really quick. This one, basic home repair, and I'm not quite sure what to include in this because two and a half years I've been here in the house, I haven't had one thing break, knock on, knock, knock on, knock on wood. And, but I did do uh, a, a, a video, and I, I have on their show video, um, each year I do an updated version of, I call it filter day, but it's all the things you need to go through maintenance wise in your house to kind of keep it up to speed. A lot of people have said they didn't even know that there were filters there or they had to do that. And, uh, I'll just put the thumbnail to it right there, put the link down below, but you know, it includes things like your AC filter, your vacuum filters, your microwave filters, the carbon filters that go in there, the uh, refrigerator, water filters. Um, you know, if you have, I don't have a whole house water filter, but if you had one, remember you have to replace those. They're probably once a year, I think. Bob told me he has one, even with his pool, it's still about $120 a year or so. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, um, church and charity, I, I know I give more than $30 monthly, but I put $30 monthly in there. And if you are a barbecuer, you are going to do propane. And I have um, I, a fire pit kind of thing out in the back, and I, ha I cook a lot on my grill. So that's probably more than... That amounts more than what I use, $20 a month, but it is a lot cheaper if you go right over here over to Ace Hardware and have them fill the actual containers. Next up, the accountant and tax fees. I'm not sure how you do yours, but I do mine on TurboTax every year. I've been doing it that way for since, who knows, I, I can always remember. Something I don't have and that you may have, I know a lot of people do, is housekeeping. And that seems to be sort of a popular thing. I don't know that much about it, but that's about it. I know a lot of people have people when they go away on vacation or something, they have some people come in and clean the house so it's nice and fresh when they come back. That's it. Now, the next one may have to do with some of your friends. Yeah, that's right. Our furry friends. And I personally don't have any, but I'm sure people that have animals are well familiar with the expenses that they have, keeping their little furry friends happy. And don't forget, um, you know, also washing and grooming them also. Now, I think we've got an awful lot covered, and now I'm going to go over some of the things some snowbirds may want to think about. I was a snowbird for a while, a couple years. Now I'm pretty much down here stationary, even though I do still have an apartment up in Kennett Square. <laughs> up in Pennsylvania, and I still do a lot of traveling, but I did, of course, you're going to go, he did a video on this. I didn't realize I had done so many videos, but I did one on empty nest kind of thing, and there is, uh, there's a bunch of house sitting companies, or people will do it on their own, or people will come, but I use the Villages one simply because 
I did. And that's what I knew when I first came down here. It's run by the village's management company, and they uh, charge a few dollars a day to do it. And they come like once a week or so, and they'll come down and flush your toilets, check everything, make sure it's working. You, in essence, they say you pretty much have to just get up and leave your house and we'll shut everything, blinds, and do all that kind of stuff for you. And then when you come back, call them a couple days ahead of time and they open up everything and turn water back on, that type of thing. Also, and that's a couple few dollars a day while you're gone. Now, I also, you may want to think you have to have a P.O. box. I have a P.O. box up there in Kennett Square. I have stuff forwarded down here. And then the other thing, too, is if you have multiple cars or you have an RV, you have to get RV storage. And I'm not real familiar with that. If some people know what the cost of that is, uh, I know it deals with the footage of the vehicle or what it is. Please, uh, if you can put it in the comments, really appreciate it, because I'm going to update this every year, kind of expand it like I do. The filter day one, which is all the maintenance things you have to do in your house. All of these links are going to be down below. Even the filters and everything else are going to be going to be down below. And that's about it as far as all the things I could think of this year. This was really long. This is like an hour and a half long. So please remember that you can actually scrub down the bottom. You can look at the chapters down there. You can look at the chapters in the description. Just click on it. It'll take you right there. Or you can do it live. You can just scrub along the timeline. If you're up on your TV, kind of bump along on it. You'll see the pictures and everything of it. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me with this. I will put some still images up, some lists on after this. I'll put music on it so you don't fall asleep too quick. Uh, anything like that, I'll put that stuff up after this. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. And go back and check out anything that you need. Also, feel free to put a link to this if you know of anybody that would like to uh, think about this, people that are moving here or whatever about the cost of living here. Anyway, thanks a lot. And like I always say, I will either see you down here in the villages or I'll see you back here on YouTube. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing, especially on this one. Hit the like button. There you go. Have a great day. Come all yours breathe. There they called her a beauty. Called him a thief in the quiet of the evening. He'll bring once, she never shot twice. Well, the air was so still, and the sky was so blue. Before she could see them. Laughter she knew She heard two shots ring out Down in the town There was three on the hillside But only one headed down I was up the hillside Where the new flowers grow Back up the hillside where the new flowers